Hi there, folks. Chris McLean, Peak Performance and Transformation Coach, and we are back once again with another episode of the Peak Performance and Predictable Growth Show, the peak performance show for creative agency founders, owners, and leaders, where we explore the agency journey from the unique perspective of those at the coalface of the industry. And my guests help unlock and dissect tools, tactics, strategies that are working right now in the trenches to help you deliver better results for your clients and grow and scale your agency to six and seven figures and beyond. It's my distinct pleasure to have Graham Goodkind from Frank PR in the studio today. And Frank is one of the UK's leading and most award-winning consumer PR agencies. And I know Graham's got an amazing story to share with us, and there's been quite a bit of a turn uh, in the story recently, which is going to be really exciting to get into. We were actually meant to do this show a few weeks ago, um, weren't we, Graham? But we had some. Uh, we, we postponed because you've had some some big news in the Frank world. So welcome to the show, and uh, yeah, take us through Frank and sort of where you came from and the big news that you sort of had in the last uh, week or so. No, thanks for having me, Chris. Lovely to be here. Um, indeed, we had some big news uh, a few weeks ago, which uh, meant that I thought it was probably best to postpone this podcast is that I've been yeah. working on and then finally managed to uh, close, which was a few weeks ago, uh, a deal to do an MBO, a management buyout uh, of the agency from Enero. Uh, the uh, company who uh, had actually bought Frank back in um, 2007. So I set the business up in 2000, um, mm -hmm. sold it um, in 2007 to, well, they were called Photon then. Some of your uh, listeners might right. remember um, yep, Photon yep. Group. So I sold it in 2007 to Photon. Um, and they became an aero subsequently in about 2012. Um, in 2012, um, I did another deal with them um, uh, after doing my earn out and completing that and being too young really to not want to carry on or not want to work in the business or stop working as some people yep, did. I yep. had no desire to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we did another deal whereby I agreed to stay on for another period of time in return for... Um, 25% of the agency being given back to me. I distributed that amongst uh, myself and my other senior management team. Um, and um, then we got to a point in time, which was about last year, where there was a new CEO uh, of Enero. Um, we had a chat about ambitions, the vision, the future, where we wanted to go. I was still as hungry as ever and keen to uh, uh, keen to uh, maybe look at alternatives and options for Frank, um, one of which included potentially buying it back. Um, turned out the door was open from an Enero point of view. And um, after, you know, tons and tons of paperwork as you get to do these things and lawyers and accountants and all the <laughs> whatnot that you need to get involved. We uh, closed the deal uh, a few weeks ago, um, which saw Frank um, now return to myself and uh, the other managing partner or managing director, Alex Greer. We bought the 75% back uh, off an arrow to now own 100%. So that's 100% an independent business. And you know what? It feels just like a startup agency again. It's uh, rejuvenating, reinvigorating, and um, yeah. kind of feels like it did back in 2000 when I set it up. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. In incredible story. Well, it must have been a lots of ups and downs and you know, how you managed to change all that time. I imagine that they say that that fresh energy and coming back and feeling like a startup in 2021 is a very different world and a very different environment to 2000. Or is it, or is it, is it, is there, is it foundationally similar or have you seen quite a distinct change in the way PR operates, um, particularly in your industry um, in that, in that couple of decades? Yeah, in a funny sort of way, it's all, you know, very, very different and very, very similar at the same time. Mm. Um, you know, the way the business works or the way PR works is pretty similar. Some of the media, well, the media yeah. channels have obviously changed as the media has evolved and mm. adapted and the reliance now on, you know, the need to think socially first from a PR point yeah. of view is, 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 is key. Whereas, you know, didn't exist when I set up the business in 2000. There was no such thing yeah. here for social media. Yeah. Um, and the internet was barely a thing, but it, it mm, was mm. obviously very reliant on traditional media. Then now, you know, kind of, you, you know, digital, social first. And, and you know, I'm, I think even though I'm an older bloke in the industry, my thinking has, has evolved over time. And I've always been very keen and enthusiastic about technology and media. So it's kind of come naturally to me. So although I'm an old guy in the business now, I don't feel like I'm out of touch. So that's different. Uh, uh, but similar. What's very different is I mm -hmm. think, um, you know, people coming into this business now are very 
different to what they were. Look, I'm now a dad. I've got 21 year old kids, so uh, twins. Yeah. So uh, who were born actually the same year that Frank was founded. So it was yeah, right. always easy for me to remember things if I can do it <laughs> time. I don't have too many different dates to remember. So my kids were born in 2000 when Frank was set up as well. So, I, you know, they're different their motivations, aspirations, needs, what they want and expect out of a company, what they want and expect out of a job is very, very different. So I think that's probably the bit that's changed the most is the people side of things. Um, yeah, and motivations, yeah. expectations and what they want out of a business that they um, work for. Um, mm. So, yeah, I mean, you know, things have changed and things are similar. But, you know, yeah, yeah. you obviously need, you can't think everything's the same. Otherwise, you become a bit of a dinosaur in business, I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to evolve with the times, right? You got to yeah, yeah. The the print the principles can apply, but you've got to evolve and adapt given the the circumstances and the, the conditions that you're Absolutely. going to market with. So that that's yeah. a really interesting point you make. What what are those differences with hiring these days? I mean, I, again, I founded my agency originally back in two thousand two, so so not not too far um, off yourself. But mm. again, what that you know that we sort of talk about millennials and Zs as a, a a general kind of bracket of people coming through what what are the what's that expectation shift that you're seeing what are they what do they want from an organization i think they want more a sense of purpose and a sense of vision and a sense of understanding of uh where you're going not that you want to be the best or you want to be the biggest or you want to be the most creative or whatever yeah i mean nice but it's much more you know what are you going to do for society what are you going to do for the world are our campaigns going to make a difference to uh you know to people and and the planet as opposed to just the bottom line uh, of the businesses that we're working for you know uh, are we going to have fun are we going to get something out of it that is going to be a life enriching experience many more things whereas you know i started working again i'm you know I'm, I'm old now but i started working and it was all about work as hard as you can you know work on that ladder progress up and get yeah. to the top and it was it was it was more of a rat race type thing it's much more mm. now i think of 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 of, of an equal relationship between um employer and and employee and i think that's good to be honest i mm. i kind mm. of i you know uh the the some you know i get together with other people that i know says why well, can't there be more people like me and why why haven't they got the drive the ambition of that i had when i was a 25 year old or whatever <laughs> well i kind of think they have but it's directed in a different in a different way mm -hmm. and it's it's an ambition that's that's different it doesn't mean it's any less ambitious it's it's just their their ambition for what they want is ta is is focused in a, in a different direction so i'm all for that mm -hmm. um and you've got to understand mm -hmm. that and appreciate that if you're gonna build a business that you know and, and and in the pr agency as in all other agencies you speak to the most important asset for us all is is our people so you, yeah. you, you've got to understand it yeah so how, how do you go about providing that that culture that background of this is a place where you're going to get to contribute to society are you looking at flatter structures are you looking at uh, initiatives and other things where they can tap into purpose and passion outside of their job roles how, how are you sort of making sure that is that that type of culture that kind of one attracts the right talent where they go oh, frank frank's the place i want to go work at and then how do you kind of keep that talent how do you keep that team um, in essence performing um, when you're trying to manage a very different psychology to your own? Yeah, I'm not, I think we do all the bits like that that other agencies do. Um, I think um, certainly my you know philosophy of frank ever since i found it really was 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 everyone used to say to me oh what makes a frank sort of person you know when you go to other agencies mm. there's always like an agency type of person there's a you yeah. know there's like a template that a character that you need to adopt if you're going to work in that environment always people mm. you're also frank sort of person so you know what a frank person is someone that comes into work and is exactly the same as they would be if they were down the pub with their mates if they were around the dinner table with their family or whatever that's a frank person someone that's frank nice by name frank by nature someone that that is just themselves so you know that follows through into i guess asking a question if people then want to do endeavors that are going to change the world are going to be brilliant are going to accomplish something for themselves they just got to talk about it and we're going to say fine so we're not structured in a way that we provide all this stuff on tap for uh the people that work with us will encourage and support their endeavors and their wants and their requirements when they do it so you know we're not particularly good at structuring things but we're brilliant at letting people express themselves and being themselves and i think that's it's more a cultural thing and that's the way that we approach it 
Yeah. Yeah, that that felt sense of autonomy is super, super important from a from a peak performance perspective when you're looking at group flow and that sort of energy around masterminding. The more autonomy somebody feels they have where they, they said even if there isn't a structure around something, if they feel like they contribute, if they feel like they can somewhat guide their days at work yeah. and, and kind of work on projects that they feel aligned to, that's a massive, massive uh trigger for for you know group flow peak performance efficiency effectiveness all this kind of really um good stuff off the back of that yeah so are you, are you sort of conscious of that that group dynamic and actually and also what's your you say you do have these people coming through the business but have you also got kind of a few a few old old blokes back in the corners what's what's the <laughs> diversity of um, your sort of age group because given you've been around for so long and yeah, that, that well, must be interesting as well. Well, in terms of diversity, I definitely tick the box for old people <laughs> in the business. I'm the oldest in the business, and I drag the average age up by probably about ten years. You know, <laughs> most people in the, most people in in the agency world are, um, from an age point of view, you know, I'd say average age is is probably mid twenties, something like that. that that's where yeah. the bulk of people sit. I've always been a big fan of um, the old adage that if you're uh, good enough, you're old enough. So I've never ever looked at age and i've never looked at experience i've just looked at personality character uh, of the person and sometimes i guess one of my faults is i get a bit swayed by um personality and uh, i like big personalities i like characters i always approach it from at the end of the day we're a pr agency but like any other agency essentially we're a client servicing business mm, what sort yeah. of person would that client like would that client like to do business for that person would that person you know like them fighting their corner you know trying to sell stories on their behalf come up with ideas on their on their behalf and mm. if the answer is yes age you know sex gender whatever doesn't make any difference to me it's just is that person just someone that would you know like to to to, to work on on your business so you know we have tended to recruit quite young because actually people that are, are quite are younger tend to have more energy and enthusiasm than as you get older it gets a bit knocked out of you unfortunately and you sort of mm -hmm. learn you kind of think oh i couldn't do this i couldn't do that or whatever you start to put negatives in your way um and i've always felt that that's, that's kind of a bad thing about getting older. It's very easy to slip into that. Oh, we can never do that. You know, that will never work type mm. attitude. Whereas younger people, when they come come in, almost have a sort of naivety that they'll um, try anything. And um, I think that's that's kind of important. Um, it's interesting what you're saying. And I've thought about this. And over the years, obviously, Frank is now 21 years old um, in September. And there's been loads of teams of people that, that, that we've had at the agency and 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 that's been conscious and that, that you know i i love um sports psychology or sporting analogies and applying them in a business context and it kind of makes me think you know was about um a manager like sir alex ferguson who uh mm. was the manager of manchester yeah. united obviously you know the biggest club in the world probably still today but also for many many years of the last mm. last 20 30 years now in his time when when man united and i'm not i'm not a manchester united fan by the way but you know they they won four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten league titles with different teams. So he always yeah, had to, yeah. although he stayed at the top and his senior team probably stayed pretty consistent, probably mm. had to tweak it here and there. He had to evolve and develop four or five different teams and rebuild four or five different teams. And any agency that's been going on for a while, I think, has to do the same sort of thing. Frank, definitely, in the last six months year we've gone from one of those rebuilds we've gone from relying on the whole group of people that have carried us in a four or five year cycle perhaps to you know a really new set of people that we've got at the agency now and a whole new team that we hope can then go on another um wave of success and it, the, the similarities with 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 that with that sort of man united and to be honest any successful team has to do that as you've you've got to understand that these things do come to a halt is that your good people will probably get headhunted by other agencies and will get off a little more money and their heads will get turned that naturally happens you can't get too down about it it's the natural life cycle of of these sort of things as a as a bloke that's been around a bit longer again maybe that's a bit easier for me to understand because i've seen it happen so many different <laughs> times you've got to embrace it and and love it you've got to say brilliant 
best of luck. I look forward to seeing you at the next industry do or whatever it might be, you know, and then you've got to get on with your job of finding another person that's going to fit in. And that person might be different. And then the team of people might be different. There might be a new dynamic and the agency will shift off in a uh, another slightly different direction with those people. Mm. But that's great. That's all kind of the evolution of, of an agency. And I guess we've had that, Frank, particularly over the last year where we've done another rebuild. We've rebuilt the squad. Yeah. The senior team is quite different. What you know in in the UK in particular, obviously, you know we've been had to contend with the last year of not really being in an office, so yeah. or not being in an office at all. I mean, we're just sort of treading now carefully, getting our you know getting back in, and we were in yesterday about eight of us, which is kind of really unusual that you're all excited about the one-off time that you're going to go into work yes, during the week. But that's another human. You know, exactly it's it's sort of a little bit odd but you know maybe that's been a good time to rebuild and we've definitely rebuilt obviously the whole you know buying back the agency stuff has happened as well so it's been a mm. massive year of change yeah. um for us but but you know tremendously exciting and you know like alex ferguson did hopefully we can build another team that will go on and win another uh championship another title team exactly. yeah, so how, how, how do you maintain that consistency what's your if you had a a north star is it value alignment is it systems and process is it a combination of all those sorts of things is there something obviously alex, alex ferguson has his, had his playbook right he had this is he had a style of play and he yeah. put players into he used what he yeah. had to create that same style of play with that playbook yeah. is that a similar approach that you have where you have a but it, you know is it driven by value is it driven by purpose and passion is it driven by systems by delivery how do you manage that and get getting the, the right team on the pitch at the right time? Yeah, well, definitely not systems. I'm really not a very good <laughs> systems person, just so you know. I think I like to think it's driven by um, creativity. And, yeah. um, you know, uh, when I when I set up the business back in 2000, that was always my vision and my dream was to have, um, you know, the most creative agency out there. And and, and there was, a, there was a, th a thought behind it, which is a good learning for um, kind of, business leaders i guess and i'll digress a bit here on agency leaders is that it's, it's kind of really easy to set up a pr agency a digital agency a social agency having that as your as your hook if you like but, but and and actually you know i'm definitely not the best pr person that there is about i'm way off that i'm not bad i know what i'm doing but there are much better pr people that i am but but i was setting up a pr business and so i have to have the business plan as well and a lot of people just go off and set up a uh something a business in their speciality without really thinking through what the business is going to be i how they're going to make money um and i'd really thought about that quite thoroughly with frank when i set it up and i thought well the best way <clears throat> of monetizing if you like a pr agency in my mind and what i'd learned and picked up of the years was was a creative pr agency because i have this idea which i think is true and still holds true 21 years later is that that's what clients get excited about, particularly in the consumer space where we operate. Is you know, it's all about the ideas, and if your idea is better than anyone else, then uh, then then kind of normally, um, it's it's going to get you the business. But it's about monetizing that creativity, and also the beauty about creativity is you don't have to charge by the hour. And I looked at all the other agencies, and they're all charging hourly rates, day rates, whatever. Everyone's got an hourly cost. Frank has never done a, done that in its life. Has never done a timesheet in its existence it you know all other yeah, agencies yeah. charge by time my business model was all about charging for ideas really and if you come mm. up with a great idea you know what i could come up with a great idea you know driving to work in the shower um you know going for a jog around the around the local park whatever it doesn't you know these ideas can pop into your head and it doesn't take ages to come up with a good idea sometimes yeah. it can but very often you know, you'll get in a room, it's the years of experience and, and just the insight that you might have. Mm -hmm. How do you monetize that? I could come up with a, yeah. an idea that changes the fortunes of a client and a PR idea, which we have many times as an agency. It's not worth then half an hour of someone's time. It's, it's clearly worth a lot more than that. So I wanted to build an agency that was all about creativity, ideas, and trying to monetize that and not charging those ideas out by time, but making that fundamental mm. um, to the agency. So that's been our North Star, is how do we, how do we create this, um, this, 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 this creativity? I've 
you know, kind of coined the term which has stuck and we trademarked it as a word, the word talkability. So how do we come up with those ideas that create talkability for client? You know, the sort of conversations that become part and parcel of everyday um, life, you know, like the sorts mm. of things that you talk about with your mates, like the sorts of things that you'll share on uh, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it might be. How do we come up with that shareable content, those shareable stories, um, you know, and the ideas that do that? And that's mm. become completely more relevant in the social world that we live in yeah. now so you know yeah. to answer the first question about how everything's evolved actually talkability is more relevant now than it's ever been and that's become our north star so that's what people buy into it frank they want to work for the greatest mm -hmm. agency that's going to come up with the best ideas that that their mates are going to be talking about with them and they're going to go ah, ah, that was one of our ideas that was one of our <laughs> campaigns that we come up with which happened the other week i mean you know we've, yeah. we've had that the other week yeah yeah i love that uh, that shift in focusing on billable hours to focusing on output and results and they said I, I love the, the 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 saying or the slogan you are if you say you can come up with an idea in a minute right yeah if you if it takes you 10 minutes to come up with an idea i'm not paying you for the 10 minutes i'm paying you for the 20 years <laughs> it's exactly. to have that idea in 10 minutes and that, that's exactly. what you're saying there that and idea can be in the shower right but it's well, well it's very it very often is and 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 i've never come across when in in all my time when um you know relationships might have ended with clients because they do unfortunately that's the nature of this business i've never once come across a client that have said well we're firing you because you're not spending enough time on our business the time sheets it's not a factor of time it's completely yeah, yeah. a factor of of kind of you know you maybe run a bit dry of ideas maybe you're not getting the results that's what it's about um mm. so it's not about the time and if you go to the end of the month you know with a client and you say well can we you know you want to get more fees out of a client for example you don't you go to a client and say look we've spent a hundred more hours than we said we would can we have you know more money more fee like that and if the client goes but yeah but you've done a crap job and there's no results and your ideas are uh, are really poor then you know that's not going to get you more money just because you spent more time if uh, you know and i've i've had a conversations with a client much easier where we've done work that's just knocked stuff out of the park where you know we've kind of got results that you would never have dreamed of that's really easy to go to a client and say you know I think we deserve a little bit more money, mate. And and those conversations are, are much easier. It's not a factor of time. And, and never once will a client say, well, that only took you, you know, two, two days of your time to do. And, and you know, and, and we're paying you whatever on the timesheet, right? They never say that. They just want you to carry on coming up with more good stuff for them. So so the culture mm. of the agency is on, on, on generating those ideas and delivering the results that, that, that make sure those ideas pay off. Yeah, amazing. I love that focus on value. Is value. Yeah. Now that that coupling of, of value and 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 money and value and time is you know, that certainly uncoupled principles. You can I can tell you the amount, of the amount of time I've had arguments with people, other agency bosses or finance directors in particular mm. about timesheets. How can you not use timesheets and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. I say yeah. easy, mate. I've never done it. If you never if you've never done it, you don't, I suppose you don't really know any difference. Um, but once you develop a culture in an organisation that doesn't mm. do it. It's quite refreshing. We have people come into our organization who have clearly worked at other agencies where, you know, monitoring time has been part and parcel of their everyday mm. lives. And it's like they feel liberated. It's like yeah. we've removed the shackles. It's like they're mm. they're free from the timesheet slavery. Brilliant. Yeah, now yeah, unleash now, now unleash your creative spirit. That's all I want. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I love that. So how does that look? Because, again, I say this in a lot of the shows, but burnout is a massive uh, you know, industry-wide problem where – and it sometimes does get coupled to this time thing right i've got more work to do i burn more time rather than focusing on output results just getting it done in your own time and having that sense of autonomy that clearly you have in your culture where people can if it takes an hour for someone to get the job done that's fine because you're not going to you're not building them based on how many yeah. hours you create how, how does how do you see that in terms of um i imagine that your agency is very very low on on burnout and on the other end you're probably very very effective and efficient in you know staff up um don't have staff sick sick leave that kind of stuff do you see that um correlation between that autonomy that ability to work when they want how they want is that sort of part of the culture as well that you don't mind whether they're working later earlier 
taking time off if they need it. Does that sort of come out of that that culture as well? Well, definitely. For me, definitely. I mean, I've never, you know, I've never looked at someone's because we don't monitor time. Therefore, we don't know really. And particularly mm. over the last year when, you know, no one's been working in an office. So you can't see um, how hard someone working. But I think it's a really good question that you say about in, in, in burnout. And, and kind of now I'm back in the driving seat, I guess, uh, uh, Frank, again, it is something I plan to look at because I think when I look back on it, I was burnt out. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm 55 now and I, about three years ago, I went part time. I went down to a day and a half a week. Um, and um, I, I sort of realized once I did that, I was absolutely knackered. I was exhausted. I was, you know, I was fucked too, if I can use that yeah. word on this, on this podcast. Yeah, I've done, sure. I've done yeah. you know, I've, I've literally done 17, 18 years at, at Frank building up to where I was and I, I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And I'd lost mm. the, the sort of, like, I'd lost my mojo, I think is the right word. And, and, yeah. and I went, I went a day and a half and to be honest at the time, if, if, if an arrow would have said, and I had the discussion with them, I said, what do you want me to do? I said, I'll happily, you know, I'll happily do so, you know, something else. I, I wasn't that bothered and they wanted me to carry on and do a day and a half so i did obviously being the person in the uk i guess for, you know for them to look after what they were you know they were shareholders in and so i did carry on doing a day and a half and i would say certainly actually after about a year and a half two years ago so up to about a year ago i, I suddenly felt like i was back it probably took me about a year and a half two years and and i know you know in my day and age again this is a we talked about the different generations you know mental health was something we never talked about we know when i was when yeah. i was growing up in this business it wasn't even a subject now it's mm. kind of all agencies are worried about it all leaders are worried about it and mm. rightly so because from a mental health point of view i was I, you know i was all over the place a few years ago i just could not be bothered anymore i wasn't enjoying work and when you don't enjoy work you know this job when i always said about pr is it's a really fun job and it's actually so much fun that it's never felt like work which is you know you do a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life is a really good analogy yeah. with the pr yeah. business for me it felt like i was working and yeah. and 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 that that I knew I knew it I knew I knew it wasn't right for me and it's kind of taken me a couple of years you know on that part time run I'm not back in it again since I've done the MBO I'm not back completely full time because I want to get my balance right but I'm back mm. three days a week and full on mentally anyway even though physically I'm I'm you know I'm not necessarily doing it but my point I guess is is that I think you know going forward I've got a and we've got as an agency think a lot more about the longer term effects of mm, of that because mm. i suffered the longer term effects and i'd been in the business for a long time and only realized that once i'd suffered them and luckily i dealt with it and i'm kind of back the other side of it but i think it's important that we don't heap too much pressure on younger people in our industry so they don't you know kind of have that feeling at whatever age it might happen to them so we need to be conscious about that yeah. and being being so open-ended about it can be brilliant but can also have an effect that some people can't control it and i guess that was me you know there was no mm. no one said you have to work this amount of hours i just did i was switched on yeah. mentally switched on all, all all you know all the time i never switched off mentally and and i struggled to switch off mentally and it's okay to switch off mentally in fact it's brilliant yeah. to switch off mentally mandatory I even. <laughs> exactly so i want people to do that and maybe yeah. we need to tell and teach people that because no one ever taught me and then i suffered the the effects at the end of it but i would never have talked yeah. about this i'd also never talked about it i'd never you know i kind of realized it a few years ago but i never i would never have talked about it until mm. the last few months i've been a bit more comfortable and a bit more aware and self-aware talking about it because i realized the difference in terms of how i felt then and, and how i felt now yeah yeah amazing and well done for having that recognition and that awareness to actually start to to realize that that's what you went through and at least now that yeah. you've had that experience you can hopefully try to start to identify it in others and put things in place to stop it from um becoming Definitely. systemic and part of the business Absolutely. Um, as you said you're you're trading in creative creativity and inspiration and passion and burnout is a, is a one way street to destroying all of that very quickly. Is yeah. that when you when you were feeling that way, you you probably weren't in your most uh, highest performance and you're uh, most creative when you and you're just burning through and you're in that kind of grey zone of just carrying on every day. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, yeah, yeah, I think I think that that's spot on, and 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 importantly, I wasn't enjoying it, and mm-hmm. and and I didn't, and I kind of didn't really realize why I wasn't enjoying it. Um, and yeah. it was quite easy to analyze. Now I was getting fed up. Little things were were winding me up, and uh, you know, and, and you know, things that I've I've dealt with. You know, I was seeing things that were happening that I'd seen happen so many times before, and yeah, that's fine. That's what that's what you experience is there for. But I was just getting fed up with seeing them again. It was like everything, every little thing was pissing me off and and it's, and that all, that all nutshell, rolled up yeah. yeah that that was what it was so um anyway mm-hmm. so we're, we're we're past that and i've kind of i feel you know reinvigorated and, and literally rejuvenated as i said at the start it feels like a startup agency again and i feel like i did when i set it up 20 years ago i've got a few more amazing. wrinkles but a couple <laughs> more wrinkles but but you know mentally still the same yeah amazing so with that said what's 2021 and beyond looking like for you now that you're re-energized you're refocused you got the new team on the pitch where what, what's next for frank i think um going forward um certainly um for us oh, oh hello yeah still got you Sorry, sorry. I'd, I'd, we'll have to edit that bit out. I thought you, I lost you in my in my headphone. So okay. going forward, uh, going forward into uh, twenty twenty one, um, the year started pretty well. Um, I think uh, we had obviously the the MBO news was was kind of big news, particularly in the UK. Um, got the phone ringing frantically with loads of other particularly agencies saying oh now you're independent we can talk to you like that i said well <laughs> kind of, we kind of we kind of been pretty independent because our owner's been out in australia and we're here in the uk so we've been pretty independent for the last few years anyway um <laughs> um but you know it certainly felt like we we're independent because in era a great mm. you know shareholder and they always left us alone and we did our own stuff so so we'd felt mm. independent but obviously we weren't perceived as independent so that's got the mm. phone ring again we were fortunate to have a campaign which literally broke the internet a few weeks ago where we combined um Weetabix which I know is Wheatbix in Australia but Weetabix yeah, yeah. over here we came up with the un- unusual food combination which was part of a f- food combination series but the one that really um got everyone ri- literally going mental over here was um was uh, our combination of Weetabix or suggestion that you have Weetabix with baked beans uh on top which um doesn't sound great <laughs> Um, to most sounds people, like a, but, sounds like British cuisine to me. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe it sounds like British cuisine. It's certainly, I mean, if you, you know, kind of didn't, I'm not sure whether the story got as far as down down under, but it basically mm. went everywhere in the UK. This unusual f- food combination it, it listed yeah. a 600 brand piling uh, online, where loads of other brands chipped into the debates, had their different suggestions of different servings or unusual food combinations, all mm. all inspired by Weetabix and beans. And it culminated a couple of days later after being featured on every TV show, every chat show, every breakfast show where people were trying Weetabix and beans. Um, yeah. It then culminated two days later in a debate, unbelievably, in the House of Commons oh, wow. um, where uh, an MP um, stood up and suggested that we need to discuss Weetabix and beans because it's an issue that's even more divisive to the nation than Brexit has been. <laughs> um, and, and literally they said that, and I'm watching that on TV going, you what, this is like a, <laughs> this is like a PR idea and you're taking wow. this seriously debating it in the house of commons um it's so amazing. it was it was a campaign that we ran that uh, uh, i mean from a business point of view you know obviously it was a lot of fun at a time of lockdown when everyone mm. was a bit miserable over here so it, it yeah. really hit the hit the moment hit the zeitgeist so it cheered a lot of people up the whole debate mm. from a business point of view it increased weetabix's sales sainsbury's one of the major retailers here reported sales of weetabix were up by 15 percent um, wow. which is obviously unbelievable considering really not a lot happens this nothing had happened this brand was mm. invented in the early 1900s and not a lot changes yeah. with it it's not like there's a different flavor yeah, or formulation stable, yeah. it's, it's exactly the same thing so nothing changed yet sales were up 15 percent as a result wow. of the the buzz and the talkability that we created so that also has created the mbo plus that campaign has created a lot of clients coming to us which gives lo- which gives us a lovely headache a lot of the clients have come to us said <laughs> we want another weetabix and we beans idea <laughs> and you're thinking okay you know i kind of yeah, maybe sure. can come up with them um, once every 10 20 years you know that you know <laughs> uh, that, that's probably the most successful campaign that frank has ever run so you know you want one of those but it's great <laughs> it forces us to keep thinking in that way mm. and it, it co- so so i think you know the business has been very good i think i think hopefully 
that will translate into lots of new clients, lots of new projects, lots of awards, and lots of fun in the process. I mean, that's kind of what I'm focused on. I'm not really, you know, there's no, now when I haven't got a big shareholder, or a big public company, there's no financial targets. There's no kind of, oh, we've got to do this this month and do that next month. I think mm. what I want to do is build now the culture up like when i started it it's like a startup i want to have fun i want to enjoy myself that means everyone's going to have fun and enjoy themselves because that's yeah. part of a culture i want us to be coming up with the best ideas like a wheat bix of bean idea i want us to be doing one of those a month um you know winning awards having the fun that goes with that having the clients naturally gravitating towards you because they want to be working with an organization that's going to do that from them and then we'll see where we go from there as i said with the startup it's a bit too it's quite hard i think you know a lot of businesses come to me say what's your five-year plan what's your three-year plan what's your plan towards exit and stuff like that i don't know sometimes if you're happy where you are and with what you're doing it's not such a bad um position to be in it actually reminds me of a story which is probably a good one to to finish off on which i read the other day so i'm kind of going to read this and talk it a little bit because i wrote it down because i loved it so much but it's it's really good analogy for agencies wherever they are along mm -hmm the life cycle and it was the story is the story goes as this is that you know how how you build a business and it applies to an agency as well as an investment banker an american investment banker was taking a much needed vacation in a small coastal mexican village when a small boat with just one fisherman docked the boat had several large fresh fish in it the investment banker was impressed by the quality of the fish and asked the mexican how long it took to catch them the mexican replied only a little while the banker then asked why he didn't stay out longer and catch more fish. The Mexican fisherman replied he had had enough to support his family's immediate needs. The American then asked, but what do you do with the rest of your time? The Mexican fisherman replied, I sleep late, I fish a little, play with my children, take siesta with my wife, stroll into the village every evening, or I sip wine and play guitar with my amigos. I have a full and busy life, senor. The investment banker scoffed. I'm an Ivy League MBA and I could help you. You could spend more time fishing with the proceeds and buy a bigger, spend more time fishing and with the proceeds, buy a bigger boat. And with the proceeds from the bigger boat, you could buy several boats until eventually you could have a whole boat fleet of fishing boats instead of selling your catch to a middleman you could sell directly to the processor eventually opening your own cannery you could control the product the processing and the distribution then he added of course you would need to leave the small coastal fishing village and move to mexico city where you would run your own enterprise your own growing enterprise the mexican fisherman asked but senor how long will this all take to which the American replied, I don't know, 15, 20 years. But what then? Asked the Mexican. The American laughed and said, that's the best part. When the time is right, you would announce an IPO, sell your company to the public and become very, very rich. You can make millions. Millions, senor? Then what? He said, to which the investment banker replied, then you would retire. You could move to a small coastal fishing village where you could sleep late, fish a little, play with your kids, take siesta with your wife, stroll to the village in the evenings where you could sit wine and play your guitar with your amigos. And to me, that was a, a lovely analogy for <laughs> wherever you are on the life cycle. Be happy with where you are. You know what? Because it, it's great. And if you're happy with where you are and life is great, don't always kind of want for these these things. And, and you know, I kind of think for me that applies with Frank beautifully is that I'm loving it at the moment. We're enjoying it. We're doing our best work that we've probably ever done as an agency in the last 15 20 years i think we've got the the best group of people that we've had in the last 15 20 years i'm there i'm sort of playing <laughs> playing playing guitar with my amigos at the moment and that's a lovely lovely place to be amazing time for a siesta love that analogy <laughs> fantastic story good yeah. perfect place to end if people uh, want to find out more about you graham get in touch uh, a little more about you where's the there's a couple of places up on screen. But what's the best place for people to reach yeah, out I mean, to get I, their Weedabix campaign from you? Yeah, well, I mean, you can email me direct. I mean, I'm gg at welcometofrank.com. There's obviously the website there, welcometofrank.com. Like you put all theirs. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, wherever you want to find me. I'm, I'm pretty easy to get hold of. Amazing. So uh, everyone that wants the, the our next big thing, the next big Weedabix PR campaign, Give know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> get, get in touch. Give Graham a holler. You might have to <laughs> ping him uh, after he's back from playing his guitar and taking his siesta. <laughs> but I'm sure he'll be around. And he'll be he'll be amped and happy to uh, have a shout. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Thanks, Amazing. Chris. Thanks so much for your time, Graham. And thanks everyone for tuning in. I'm sure that was enlightening. It was great for me. Uh, yeah, loved hearing Graham's story, and I love that uh, 
analogy at the end. What a place to finish. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Graham, for being here. And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Good stuff. Take care.